So basically, the, in this algorithm, we're going to be evaluating uh, and converting an infix expression that's not fully parenthesized to postfix. Uh, it can have parentheses, it's just not fully parenthesized. So parentheses would, would raise that, whatever it's around, to a higher priority. So we have to take account of that. We're going to actually do it as a function, so we're going to design a function named infix to postfix, and it's going to take a string parameter, which is going to have the expression. We're going to require that expression to have a space between every token. So what do we mean by token is, if we have a number that we're using in the expression, or we have an operator, uh, each of, and we have parentheses, there have to be a space between each of those important items. And so that's how we'll find them when we scan things in. So to actually develop the algorithm, they're going to point some things out. Uh, you can read this section of the book. He talks about it a bit more than I do on the slides. Uh, so basically, if you look at this expression, uh, a plus b times c, we have these parentheses. So we want to do the a plus b first. So this actually needs to become a, b plus multiply. So you'll see that the, the plus is higher important, so we do it before the multiply. Um, but for this expression, a plus bc, there's no parentheses. We want the multiply to be more important. Uh, so that you'll see the operators are out of order. Uh, so the result, actual result should be a, b, c, and then multiply, and then add last. So we need to reverse the operators when the precedence dictates it. Uh, since the reversal is nicely added, uh, handled with a stack, that's what we're going to use. So let's look at the code. And right here. So uh, you can go through this code. This has, a, it builds in a, a, uh, a dictionary. So in the dictionary, you can look up the key, which is the operator, and it gives you a number for the precedence. And you can see the, the one is the highest priority, and the uh, uh, well, the one left parentheses is one, plus and minus is two, multiply and divide are three. So let's see how that works. So first, uh, there is a limitation to this method. In uh, you pass it a string, and the first thing it does is split it. Now the split method uh, was talked about, I think, in chapter one with strings. So if you take a string and say split it it looks for a white space between uh, things that you type on your keyboard and it splits it up into a, a list where each item is an individual uh, token uh, separated by white space. So that would give you this token list. Uh, if you wonder what this does, just make up an expression, one of the ones in the example down here, and then, or actually just print the token list right here and you can see what it is, or turn on your debugger and run to that breakpoint and see what the token list looks like. You can see what split does. So now we have every token in a list, so for each token it's going to scan from left to right in the expression, and it's going to check is the token in A through Z, or is the token a digit. Uh, now one of the limitations here is it only allows single digits uh, in the expression. It won't allow like 22 or 199 and part of the exercise you're going to do is to fix that. So if the token is a operator, that's an operand, that's what this is testing, uh, it's going to append it to a postfix list. Okay, so this is the list it's going to eventually output. So that's the first operand. If the token's a left parentheses, it pushes the token on a stack. If it's a right parentheses, it's going to pop it from the stack, and it's going to do a little work. So what it's going to do after it pops the token, it's going to loop, and while the top token that just popped is a left parentheses, uh, it's going to append that top token to the postfix list. Oh, while it's not a left parentheses. It's going to append the top token to the prefix list, and then it's going to uh, pop the op stack and put that in top token. So then it loops here and it says, well, top token is not this, so it'll keep going. So this is going to do the reversal, some of the reversal I was talking about, uh, on handling parentheses and making it a higher priority. Okay. 
uh, if the token was not uh, the end of a parenthesis, then it's going to, while the op stock is empty, not empty, and uh, this this is this array of the priority, the priority or precedence of looking at the top of the stack is greater than the token that we that we just read in, then we're going to append, we're going to pop the stack and append that to the list. And then we're going to push the token that we just read in. So this will end up uh, reversing it if it has the right priority. So, And then while uh, not op stack is empty, so when this for loop's all done, if the op stack is not empty, it, it pops anything left and puts it on the postfix. And then it joins this list back into a string with spaces in between. So it's going to return a new expression with spaces in between every token. And that's important because what it's returning, we'll want to, uh, in our exercise, pass it into the postfix evaluator, which we're going to talk about next. So postfix evaluation is really simple. Uh, in fact, I've worked with computers where it was built in as part of the computer. Uh, that's how the computer actually worked. The computer internally had a stack. And every time you loaded an operator, it pushed it on the stack. And then when it saw an operand, it, it performed its operation on the last two things pushed. Uh, so it's a very uh, useful thing for evaluating things on a computer. Uh, so we want to process from our expression from left to right. So we're going to be given a postfix expression. And if the token is an operand, we just push that operand on the stack. If the token is an operator, we pop the last two operands off the stack and perform the operator on them, and then push the result back on the stack. When we run out of tokens, there should only be one value on the stack, and we just pop that and return it. So it's actually a very simple algorithm. I'm going to let you look at the code in the book. Uh, so you need to look at the code uh, and uh, for on your own. Now both of these things have a big problem is they only handle uh, numbers that have a single digit. So you want to look at how you can fix that. So a clue is they use the in operator. So they're so they read a token like uh, ten. And they say, is 10 in the list of characters 0 through 9? And it won't find it because that will only match single characters. So what you have to do is basically when you get a token, uh, check if it actually can be interpreted as an integer. And so you might want to search about Python. How do, you how do you tell if a string contains an integer? Uh, one idea is you actually use the int method to try to convert it to an integer and if it gets a error you use a try catch block or a try rescue block in Python to rescue that uh, and that, then you would know it's not a uh, an integer but if it succeeds you know it's an integer and you convert it to an int. Now in the actual exercise you need to convert everything to floats so it's a little more complicated than that uh, so that's what you have to fix in both of the methods. And that's it. So this is the last thing you'll work on this week. Uh, and then we'll start some more of this chapter on basic uh, data structures or linear structures uh, for next week.